Okay. Um, yeah, good morning, afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us here again today on this tropical system. So 99W was upgraded overnight to tropical depression 20W, um, much as we were expecting uh, yesterday. It will continue to steadily intensify in the coming hours and overnight. So be looking out for that. But this is all as we've been forecasting to occur as 20W does get its act together. So this information presented here is a little bit outdated. This is based on 10 o'clock information. We have since then issued our 11 o'clock intermediate advisory that was issued uh, just after 11 o'clock this morning. That's intermediate advisory or special advisory 2A. And with that advisory, we did put uh, Guam, Rota, Tinian, and Saipan under a tropical storm warning. So we issued a tropical storm watch this morning with our second advisory at eight o'clock. And then we went ahead and upgraded to a tropical storm warning at our 11 o'clock special advisory. So this is just procedural as the saying approaches. Uh, go to the next slide, Maria. This is the Joint Typhoon Warning Center uh, graphic showing the, the region. We do have two tropical depressions in the West Pacific. One is west of the Philippines and no threat to us, that's 21W. And ours is 20W, so when you're looking online, uh, make sure you're looking at 20W. That's the one that's in, on approach to the Mariana Islands. At seven o'clock this morning, uh, we were looking at a closest point of approach with the Joint Typhoon Warning Center forecast uh, to Haganya at one mile early tonight and 10 miles from WFO Guam also early tonight. Uh, that will change just a little bit as when the next forecast track and plot comes through at two o'clock this afternoon. But this is indicating a passage over Guam tonight. And so we're gonna see a little bit of wobble between now and then we still have about 12 hours to go before passage. So this is always the room for a little bit of wiggle as the storm approaches. The next slide shows the Joint Typhoon Warning Center plots. Uh, this is their forecast track. Uh, this is identical in nature to the forecast graphics that we put out from our office. It's just a different look and feel. We get questioned that a lot of times is if our plots and images are the same as theirs. Uh, they use knots, nautical miles and UTC, UTC or Zulu time, whereas we use miles per hour and local time. So those are the only differences. Otherwise the track intensity and forecasts are identical. So this is again showing the passage of a tropical storm over Guam. It remains a tropical depression at this time with maximum sustained winds of 35 miles per hour. That is expected to intensify into a tropical storm sometime later today as it approaches. The next slide shows that 7 a.m. information. This is from an eight o'clock advisory number two. It was located at 12.1 North 147 East. In our 11 o'clock advisory, it was at 12.7 North 146.0 East. And at 11 o'clock, it was 100 miles east southeast of Guam. So this is the updated information that is not on the slide at this time. Maximum sustained winds were holding steady at 35 miles per hour, and it was proceeding toward the west northwest at 14 miles per hour. There are some indications that it is moving a little bit slower than 14 miles per hour. So we're going to be analyzing that in the next couple of hours ahead of our full forecast advisory update that will be going out at two o'clock this afternoon. Uh, again, it is expected to continue to strengthen and could be a tropical storm uh, later this afternoon. So be on the lookout for that change. The next plot shows the 7 a.m. forecast plot. The blue shaded area, those are tropical storm force winds, low end tropical storm force. The yellow, those are severe tropical storm force winds. And the red, that is typhoon force winds. So again, we're not looking at a typhoon scenario for Guam. This will not be a typhoon for us. Uh, this will more likely be a tropical storm as it passes by. And this is a minimal tropical storm, um, not a severe tropical storm. So the good news is for us, if you notice the plot, there's a lot more blue shading north of the track, which is right over the heart of Guam and less blue to the south. And that's based on the storm symmetry showing the much stronger winds to the north of this low level circulation center versus to the south. So. If this passes over Guam, we'll see less winds than what will be experienced to the north. And if it passes north of us, we'll have uh, even less winds expected uh, than what they'll see in the scene of ice. And the next slide shows that visible satellite image um, from earlier this morning showing that low level circulation center right near that burst of convection east southeast of us. We did have a lot of showers and thunderstorms 
uh, over Guam and the CNMI early this morning. In about a 10 minute period, we had a lot of rainfall over the office, uh, nearly filling our drainage pond. So that's just indicative of this tropical environment. There's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. And so when the showers do come over, they will drop a good amount of rainfall in a very short period of time. So that is a concern for flash flooding issues. Um, as far as what we're expecting in the next 12 hours as this thing approaches and makes its eventual pass very near or over Guam, we're not gonna be looking at a wall of showers and thunderstorms and winds persisting nonstop. This will be more periodic in nature. So we're gonna have peaks and lulls in weather and winds. Uh, you can probably see peaks of sunshine over the next five or six hours. That will not be out of the question as we are kind of going into a lull right now, looking at the visible satellite loop, if you can see my camera feed. Um, that'll be the nature over the next five or six hours. And then the heart of this system will be over passing over Guam tonight. So the next slide that shows our microwave analysis, this is from our science officer, Roger Edson. He analyzed this picture from the Himari microwave um, sounder showing that center of circulation east southeast of us based on his analysis the greens yellows and reds those indicate the strong cores of showers and thunderstorms and that black area that was that intense shower that moved over guam early this morning around 6 45. so this is going to be the nature of it it's just going to be periodic showers and thunderstorms as the storm approaches this heavier showers they will be accompanied by stronger gusty winds and that's typical with these systems you have stronger winds aloft in the atmosphere around 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 feet, where you have these strong showers that will help bring those stronger winds down to the surface. And then once it passes, the winds will subside. And that's typical of a tropical system with the peaks and lows in winds and gusts. So the next slide shows the airport observations. Uh, this was uh, last updated at nine o'clock this morning. Much lighter winds across Guam, and we're gonna see that in the next slide, but lighter winds across Guam this morning except for some brief gusts with the showers. As you go north across the CNMI, the winds gradually in, increase. Uh, they've been having periods of near tropical storm force winds at Saipan, particularly in the higher elevations. And that's shown in the next slide um, with these polar orbiting satellite winds. So we have large spots of 20 to 25 knot winds at the ocean surface, and likely they're probably stronger. We're waiting for the latest data that should be coming through in the next um, hour or so from the polar orbiters, and then we'll have a better feel for the near storm environment, uh, what's evolved over the last 12 hours. But if you look to where the lower level circulation is depicted here, much lighter winds around that low level circulation. And so that's the good news for us, even though we're looking at a passage near or over Guam, the lower levels are much lighter winds near that circulation center. So that's gonna be to our advantage. And then farther to the south, you have more of a monsoonal flow we will see the winds gradually start strengthening around that low level center as it uh, gets its act together and starts to become better organized in the next 12 to 24, 36 hours. Uh, that's just a typical storm lifespan as it intensifies. But for us, we're gonna see the very bare minimal tropical storm force winds over Guam, but more winds over the CNMI. And again, we're not expecting severe tropical storm force winds even for the CNMI. It's gonna be just much windier up there in nature. So the next slide, this is showing the Hurivac software, the wind timing. Um, I don't think this is very representative of the storm environment. This is from that software where we plot our forecast tracks. This is showing tropical storm force winds beginning around 4 p.m. today and continuing through 4 a.m. Again, this is not very representative of the storm environment. So this is just something that we look at as a rule of thumb, but notice the wind speeds in that second column, very, bare minimal tropical storm force winds. Um, tropical storm force winds go from 39 miles per hour sustained up to 73 miles per hour sustained. So we're gonna be on the lower side of this. And I think what we'll be seeing as an islands will be actually lower than what's depicted here in this plot. Um, if there's a northward shift in the forecast track at the two o'clock advisory, that would indicate lesser winds for Guam. Still tropical storm force expected, but lesser winds than what's uh, shown in the second column. So keep that in mind. The next two slides, those show the winds expectations for Rota and Tinian and Saipan. And I think this is again, not very representative. This is based on the Hurivac software take on the storm environment, but it uh, does not capture the actual environment as observed by satellite. So the final slide, 
um, this is the updated information. Tropical storm warning has been issued for at 11 o'clock for Guam and the CNMI. So that is the current status here at the Weather Service. A tropical storm warning is in effect. Uh, we do expect tropical storm force conditions for Guam and the CNMI tonight. Uh, 20W will likely become a tropical storm early this afternoon. We'll be watching for that at our two o'clock and possibly as late as our eight o'clock advisory. Flash flood watch remains in effect. Small cut advisory remains in effect and a high risk of rip currents is in effect along east facing reefs. And for preparedness, um, definitely keep up to date with the latest forecasts and storm information on our webpage. We will be updating that uh, very frequently on our, our website as we transmit bulletins over the next several hours. Um, the closest point of approach currently, we're expecting that between nine o'clock and midnight tonight. So for us, as far as this storm environment, it's a, like, again, it's very asymmetric. We'll probably see a brief period of much stronger winds near tropical storm force, and then it'll quickly subside as it moves along. Tomorrow, we'll see more of a monsoon type pattern with the winds shifting toward the south and keeping quite breezy through the day on Friday. As far as expectations, cloudy with periods of showers, isolated thunderstorms, locally heavy rainfall and strong gusty winds. Uh, which will be intensifying as we go through the afternoon and evening hours today. Again, the weather will not be a solid, endless rain and thunderstorm and winds. It'll be coming in periods and peaks and lows. The winds will be increasing to near tropical storm force by evening and tropical storm force overnight. Uh, we're expecting, as Chip Gard and Dr. Mark Lander from University of Guam have um, created a tropical storm A and tropical storm B classification. A is the lower end tropical storm and B is severe tropical storm. We're expecting lower end tropical storm at 40 to 50 miles per hour. We'll be updating this forecast by three o'clock this afternoon with the latest forecast information on our two o'clock advisory. And of course, with higher gusts. Season surf will build to near hazardous levels out in the open waters and the surf. So keep that in mind. Those will be the main concerns. In the next slide, this is our full suite of text bulletins that are in play right now. The Joint Typhoon Warning Center does issue its forecasts on the ones and sevens or every six hours. Following the Joint Typhoon Warning Center bulletins, we will put out our public advisories every six hours on the twos and eights. And you can go to the next slide, Maria. Uh, we'll be putting out our public advisories on the twos and eights. Intermediate advisories are issued when we're in a tropical storm watch or warning, and that goes out on the fives and elevens. So every three hours, we'll be putting out um, updated information to our webpage and subsequently to our Facebook page. But the best place for the most up-to-date information is our webpage. Um, on the threes and nines, we'll be putting out the local statement and that provides detailed information as far as rain, wind, weather, seas, and surf for each individual island under a watch and warning. So go to our local statement on our webpage and find that information there. And finally, for contact information on the last slide, um, this is how you can reach my office and you can reach myself. I think I will be here probably through the passage of the storm. Um, so I'll be here all day and much of the night if you need to reach me. And that's all I've got. I do have my camera on the animated loop, I believe. So I will take questions. Okay, thank you so much, Landon. We'll um, assist on our end. I'm gonna go down the list as I see them on my screen. Up first, we have Dana Williams. Did you have any questions? Uh, so we're still looking at the, um, we're still looking at the closest point of approach for Guam between nine and midnight then? That's correct. And I'll have an updated timeline for that at our two o'clock advisory, but generally between nine and midnight. Okay, and we, we're still looking at, at passage over the island, though, as you said, the, the, the bulk of the storm is, is to the north, but it is, we're still looking at it coming over us, right? That's correct. Okay, thanks. That's all. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dana. Up next, we have Oya. Hi, good morning, everyone, um, or good afternoon. Um, Landon, <laughs> so we're looking at, for Guam specifically, 40 to 50 mile per hour winds with 60 mile per hour gusts. That's correct. And that's going to be low in tropical storm force. We're going to be updating the forecast uh, with the latest observations and uh, data that we're pulling in. Uh, we'll have an updated forecast by three o'clock. We could see a little bit of a 
a shift in winds. It might be a little bit decreased for Guam, but still tropical storm force. Uh, just the way this thing is looking in the visible satellite imagery, uh, we're going to still have a little bit of room for some changes in our forecasts, but still holding steady, minimal tropical storm force conditions expected. Okay. And so, Jenna, taking that into consideration, um, schools will not be opening as shelters? Uh, there's been no change in condition of readiness at this time and no change for emergency shelters to open. Uh, there is going to be an update again this afternoon around 2 p.m. Um, and from there, there might be different decisions, but at this time, there's just been no change. Okay. Uh, and DPW is working with mayors on flooding issues? Yes, that's correct. Uh, Department of Public Works. Uh, they're currently pre-staging heavy equipment at flood prone locations, as well as cleaning out debris uh, through the drains throughout the villages right now, working with the Mayor's Council of Guam in preparation. Got it. That was all for me. Thank you. Thanks, Oya. Thank you. Yeah. Up next, we have uh, PNC Digital. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have Thomas with KUAM. Thank you. Okay, thanks so much, Jason. Uh, this concludes our brief. Thank you so much, Landon. Did you have anything else to add? Um, nothing further to add. Um, stay tuned to our webpage and our social media. We'll be putting out the latest advisory at 2 o'clock. Um, that's going to have the latest forecasts tracks and plots, um, so stay tuned for that. Okay, thank you so much, Landon. And on our end, Guam Homeland Security, Civil Defense, we're continuing to push out preparedness messaging. You can find them on Guam Homeland Security's Facebook and Instagram page. You can always give our office a call or visit our website uh, for important information. Uh, thank you all for your time today. Thank you for helping us get this message out to the community. We appreciate it. This concludes our brief. Thanks, Jenna. Jenna. Thanks, Landon.